everybody, welcome to another episode of Off the Shelf. Today we are going to be talking about our May theme for the 2021 EAPL Reading Challenge, which is at the movies. So for this video, I picked books that have been turned into movies. Obviously there are a million books that have been turned into movies, some of them over and over and over again. Um, and then in the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, there have been a lot of books that have been turned into TV shows as well. So if you would rather one of those, um, the series True Blood is based on the Suki Stackhouse novels by Charlene Harris. Uh, Call the Midwife is a book. Shadow and Bone, which just premiered on Netflix, is a YA series. So there's lots of things of books that have been turned into TV shows, if that's what you wanna read, by all means, go for it. The ones that we're gonna be talking about here today have all been turned into movies. This is what I decided to go with. So, let's start with Waiting to Exhale by Terry McMillan, which was a 1995 movie with Whitney Houston. Um, and it is the story of four women, four friends who the men in their lives have, have proven themselves not to be very reliable and they had put their own dreams on hold and everything for these relationships and these men. And they've decided enough is enough. They're, they're done. They're going to support each other and actually start living their lives the way they want to. This is a great friendship book. Um, great, great characters. So definitely check this one out. It does have a sequel. They didn't make a sequel to the movie, but it does have a sequel um, for the book. So if you read it and you wanna know more, there's a sequel. Then we have Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize that Breakfast at Tiffany's was a book. And then if they do, they maybe don't realize that Truman Capote wrote it because they think of Truman Capote as In Cold Blood. Um, but he wrote Breakfast at Tiffany's. The movie is from 1961, starring Audrey Hepburn and George Pappard. Um, so in the movie, it's set in 1960-61, that time frame, basically. The story in the book is set in the 40s, um, because the book came out in the 50s. So it's set in the 40s. It follows Holly Golightly, who is... Um, I don't want to say she's an escort, but that's kind of what she is. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, it's great, as long as you ignore the very, very racist um, representation of a, I believe he's supposed to be Japanese man, played by Mickey Rooney. Why Mickey Rooney played an Asian character at all is beyond me, but if you can get past that, the rest of the movie is wonderful. But Holly Golightly, she's, she prides herself on being the top banana in the shock department, um, and men take her out, give her money to go to the powder room, and all kinds of things. So if, if you have seen the movie and you love the movie and you want to read the book, definitely check it out. If you haven't, like, you're missing out, you should definitely read and watch. Then I have The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. And this book is heartbreaking. Um, I read this book several years ago. I actually, I listened to this book. I used to have a, a fairly long commute and I listened to this book during my commute and it was rough. Um, I'm not sure I recommend doing it that way. But it's a very, very good book. It was a 2007 film, um, and it's the story of a friendship between a wealthy boy and the son of his father's servant in um, Afghanistan, I believe. And it's just, it's, it's intense, it's heartbreaking, um, but it's beautifully written. So if you're looking for something deeper than... Um, some of the other things. This is definitely one we're checking out. I definitely recommend it. And I have The Dig by John Preston, 
which is a 2021 film. Uh, it is on Netflix. I believe it's a Netflix-produced film. So it just came out this year. And it is based on a true story of a woman in uh, Britain in 1939 who believes that she's got something of archaeological importance in her garden. Um, and so convinces people to come out and excavate her mounds in the garden, and it ends up being the discovery Sutton Who, which is arguably the biggest 20th century discovery um, for archaeology. So if you're into archaeology, if you're into Anglo-Saxon finds, if you're into true stories, you know, anything like that, I definitely recommend this one. I haven't had a chance to watch the, the film yet. Um, it's got Carrie Mulligan, I believe, in it. Um, but I'm, I'm fascinated with all of that. So I think reading and watching the film, if, like me, you're fascinated, definitely give that a shot. Then I've got Rum Punch by Elmore Leonard, which um, became the movie Jackie Brown from 1997, Quentin Tarantino film. Um, and it is the story of a man who has been selling illegal weapons um, to people who should not have them and, um, and a courier. And I, if you haven't seen the movie Jackie Brown, definitely watch the movie Jackie Brown. But Elmore Leonard is a really entertaining writer. I think that he, um, he tells a really interesting story. Like, I, I'm not sure how to describe it, but he's a great writer. If you haven't read Elmore Leonard, definitely give it a shot. If you've seen Jackie Brown and you really like it, definitely read, um, Rum Punch and, and, you know, read the source material. Then I've got The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd which is set in 1964. Um, it was a 2008 film, and it is about a little girl whose mother died, and so um, there is a surrogate mother figure in her life, a black woman, um, who stands up to three of the most racist men in town. She gets thrown in jail, and the little girl decides she's gonna spring them both free. Um, so they escape and go to um, the home of these three sisters who are beekeepers. And the little girl learns all about life, honestly. Um, but bees and all that stuff. So this is, this is definitely one of the um, more heartwarming ones. The movie is really good. So if you haven't read it or if you haven't seen the movie, I would recommend them both. And we've got Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. If you have not seen this movie, which is from 2018, go watch this movie. It's so good. And it is a big deal because it is the first Hollywood film that stars all Asian actors. Um, and that should not be the case in 2018. That should not have been the case because we've been telling Asian stories a lot longer than that. But everybody in it is an Asian actor. It's an amazing movie. It's so much fun. And I, like, I highly, highly recommend it. The book, um, it's actually a trilogy. This is the first book. And it's... It's also a lot of fun, and it digs into a lot of issues about identity and otherness. Um, it follows a young woman who has been dating this man who, unbeknownst to her, is from a very, very wealthy and powerful family in Singapore. And when his best friend is getting married, they go to Singapore um, for the wedding. But she has been raised, even though she is also Chinese, this, their whole family, everyone they know is Chinese. She's Chinese, but she was raised in America. And so being American Chinese is very, very different from the um, Singapore Chinese 
that she's encountering. And so it's, it's about identity, it's about class, um, these people are just beyond wealthy to the point of ridiculous. So it's fun, but you also, I think it's an interesting glimpse into a world that I am going to assume most of us are not familiar with. Um, I definitely recommend it. I've seen the film several times. I've read the books. They're all amazing. Then I have... I'm going to butcher his name on this, y'all. This is Brooklyn by Colm Tobin. Tobin? He's Irish. Uh, anyway, this is a 2015 film. Um, and it is the story of a young girl in the 50s who, I say young girl, she's in her 20s, um, in the 1950s who leaves her small hometown in Ireland to go to New York um, and settles in Brooklyn to start a new life because there's just nothing for her in Ireland. And it's just, it's about her learning how to be away from home, learning who she is without that world that she's always lived in and you know all of her lifelong friends and her family and all of that and um she meets new people makes friends she falls in love it's i love this story the movie is better than the book the book's good the movie's better so um i definitely recommend you read the book but go watch the movie because it leaves you with just a sense of like, oh, that was nice when you're done. So I definitely recommend it. And like I said, the book's good, but the movie is better. This does not leave you with that same warm, fuzzy feeling. This is In the Time of Butterflies by Julia Alvarez, which was a 2001 film. Um, and this is based on a true story. Um, it's set in 1960 in the Dominican Republic. It's in the last days of the Trujillo dictatorship. Um, and the three Mirabal sisters go and visit their husbands who are in jail, and then they are assassinated. Uh, that's all true story. Then Julia Alvarez imagines their earlier years in this book, um, imagines their teenage years and how they became radicalized, how they came to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? How they became revolutionaries um, and, and what led to their murders in 1960. So if you're looking for something historical, something kind of to sink your teeth into, I definitely recommend this one. I haven't seen the film. Um, I'm hoping it's good because this is a good book, but definitely check it out. And we got an old one for you here. <laughs> this cover tells you absolutely nothing. Um, this is The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett. It was a 1941 film with Humphrey Bogart. Um, which you've probably heard of, but you may never have seen it, even though you've heard of it. Uh, and it follows Sam Spade, who's a private investigator. He is hired by a woman to track down her sister who has eloped. And um, so he's doing this, and then turns out that as he's, he's doing this, um, things have gone, you know, tail end up. Um, because she's not who she says she is and his partner gets shot and then they're trying to track down the the jewel encrusted falcon like so much going on here um, but if you're looking for a mystery this is this is a fun one for you um, like I said it is older because it was turned into a film in 1941 I don't know when this book actually came out let's see What's the copyright on this edition, at least? So, the copyright on this one is 1929. So if you're looking for something 
mystery, older. If you have never read it or seen the movie, check it out. And then, we well, have one more for you. I saved the tome for last. This is Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. Um, and I cheated a little on this one because Lonesome Dove was a mini-series. So, it wasn't a movie, but it's also not a TV show. It's that weird in-between. Um, but it was a miniseries in 1989, and the story focuses on um, the relationship between several retired Texas Rangers um, and their adventures driving cattle, basically, which sounds boring, but it is not. <laughs> it's, it's really good. Um, Larry McMurtry is a beautiful writer. He writes beautiful prose, and I, he really evokes the Old West and the romance of the Old West. Um, so if you like Westerns, or if you're just looking for something, you know, maybe a little bit different than what you've been reading lately, and you haven't read Lonesome Dove, absolutely give this one a try. Um, this is one of my grandfather's favorite books. He he reads a lot, but Larry McMurtry, he really loves, and Lonesome Dove is, is at the top of his list. So I very highly recommend this book. Um, and yeah, and the miniseries too. The miniseries is really good. Okay, that's what I have for you today. I tried to pick books that Maybe we're not as much on your radar. Maybe you didn't realize that the movies came from books originally. I know there are certainly movies that come out that you're like, wait, what? That was a book? No way. Um, so that's kind of what I was going for with this one. But like I said at the beginning, there are so many books that have been made into movies. So you will have no problem finding a book for this month's theme. If you're not already reading along with us for the 2021 EAPL Reading Challenge, there's always time to jump in. You can start with this month's theme. You can start with January's theme. You can start with October's theme. It doesn't matter. We just want you to read and enjoy what you're reading and maybe try some new things. So definitely join us with that. You can either print out a reading log checklist um, should be in the description box below, or you can go to our Beanstack, either through the Beanstack app or through our website and register for the challenge there, and then you earn fun little badges if you do it that way. Um, so definitely keep reading with us. If you are looking for more recommendations, go to our website, and um, which is eastonpl.org, click on Off the Shelf, and you can submit a personalized recommendation request form where you tell us a little bit about what you like, what you're looking for, and we'll send you back some recommendations based on what you tell us. That's all I have for you today. I will see you soon with another video. Until then, happy reading.